On this episode, we have a special guest appearance by our friend Steve. Tune in and meet his character. Last time on Guardians of Fall. Last session, you guys woke up after guarding um, that shipment of fey wine that was going out in the cellars. Um, and you ended up kind of exploring the aqueducts, trying to figure out who that summoner was that caused the water and mud methods to appear. Um, you ended up going about halfway through the city underground and then coming up in the central market, and you went to a nearby tavern to see if anyone had seen a suspicious character come out early that morning. Uh, after that, we had Hans and Franz, Andrew's Hans and Franz, and Nora and Rowan go to the temple district and um, Hans and Franz, played by Josh, and Megan's character, Una, went to uh, go shopping for some gems. There was a little bit of interesting things that happened to each one of them. You headed back to the inn, and then y'all had an epiphany to go back and look for summoning marks, and you went down the other way that you didn't explore before of the aqueducts and ended up finding not only the marks, but it looked like a upper-level grate uh, Una was able to shimmy through it and go and see that it's another pathway that goes up to another level of the aqueducts. And then she came back down, reported what she saw, and that's where we left off. It's probably about six or seven o'clock at night now. You guys are probably getting really hungry because it's dinner time. Are we, do I think that the rest of the party can fit in this? It would be impossible for Rowan, and um, Hans and Franz would probably have to, like, shimmy army crawl. It would be a very, very tight fit. Only basically you and Nora could fit through this easily. Yeah. <laughs> fit through what? The, the, the great. The, the secret. The oh, 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 great oh, right, next to the um, summoning thing. circle. Yep. yep. Which is man-made because there's, like, little levers and stuff, mm -hmm. like buttons to push to make the great smooth. Well, typically grates well, aren't yeah, made. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, <laughs> I know what you meant. Naturally grown sewer grates. Yeah. Ah, uh, here we see the sewer There was special water. little thingies. They weren't permanent fixtures. There we go. <laughs> so what are you guys doing? Um, probably go back to the... Oh, I'm so hungry. Bravo, let's go eat some food. The DM narrator. Yes, I am hungry. <laughs> You are correct. Look, I'm, it's my job to plant subliminal messages in your guys' That head. wasn't subliminal at all. <laughs> that was direct to ear. I just said you guys are probably getting hungry because it's like 6 or 7 o'clock at night and you haven't eaten in a long time. It's only drill bits in every place. Yeah. Well, I mean, if, if there's, eat. yeah, there's no way that we all can go up to this grate and we don't necessarily know where it's, you know, well, like it leads what, to a new level. Well, it does, but we don't know, like, what um, pipe or aqueduct that is. Mm -hmm. Like, we don't know what section it exactly. is, right? Yeah. Um, it's the best bet to go try and find Hughes and have him use his contacts with the city, maybe? Right. Or it. we could go to, like, the city center, like, the library place where we could find plans of where the stuff might be laid out. We could what about city workers? Too. Probably going to know. I mean, I would hope a city worker who, like, works down here would know. Oh, yeah, yeah. you mean, um... The guy you named. The guy I named... Chad Chatterson. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Chad Brandon. Chad Brandonson. Yeah. Totally forgot about him. That infamous NPC. Yeah. And his brother. Carl Schrodinger. Brad Chatterson. Brad Chatterson. <laughs> Brad Chatterson. Oh, they're brothers, don't worry about it. <laughs> Same father, different mother. I mean, do we want to just go back Same and eat, different. and then... Mm -hmm. Oh, sure. Go back to the inn, eat, and then go look and see what's on that level? Or do we want to go and look at the boar's head? Uh, the boar's head was... The that's sea. the inn that you followed. The sketchy pub. Yeah. Right. It's been a day, and I told him it was going to stop back in a day or two. Or a day or so. Right. It's only been... Yeah. It's been, right now, less than 24 hours. Yeah. So well, it, it was it, that what, day. No, that it was. So, she wasn't it? she went. When Una you went oh, right, there. Una. 
Una went to this place at probably like close to midnight yeah. of this past morning. So okay. the day of the, it was the method fight. So it hasn't even been yeah. 24 hours? Yeah, it was when no. you guys, it hasn't even been 24 hours since you were there. Um, so, I mean. And you said you'd be back in a couple days. Did I say a couple so, days? yeah. So maybe, maybe let's not go. <laughs> I mean, you could if you wanted to, but I'm just saying. No, I think we should start with Hughes. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. See if we could get some check out city plans. Find when does out his shift start? like where that goes. What's it? What time did his shift start? Well, he was still on. You just were with him a couple hours ago. You were with him about well, not even like an hour and a half. Oh yeah. No, it's been, been a while. You guys parted ways with Hughes at about like one thirty, so it's been five and a five or s- yeah five six hours since you parted ways with him. Okay. Um. But we know that he's in... Mm-hmm. He's in the Shades District. Right. Yep. That's and where he's based to out go, of. He's to go to the... Which is kind of weird that he's interacting with stuff here. <laughs> he's out of district. Well, we don't have... We, do you, we do don't you have know? jurisdictions. Do you, do you know how the jurisdiction works? No, I'm just saying. Una, roll me a intelligence check. Or his... Do, 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 yeah. do, 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 do. Which one? Um, intelligence. Whichever one's better. <laughs> But is this is local knowledge, so you can add your proficiency bonus. Intelligence. Fourteen. Um, Wait. you. Thirteen. <laughs> That's still good enough. You you're not a hundred percent sure where all the districts are, but you know that the closest watch house to the guild house is the one that is in the shades. Okay. Oh. And it is also the newest watch house in the city. Blah, that's why he was here. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. So it must be like a tri district jurisdiction or something. That or it's new and they want to this is a big deal. Like it's crazy that someone broke into the guild hall and there's a magic tunnel. So they're yeah. trying to get a name for themselves. Well, tunnel isn't magic. Name for themselves I don't think so much. But So I don't want to be that person, but you guys haven't talked in your voice like that all the time. <laughs> and I'm kinda of yeah, I'm just kind of other than when you when you were yelling at the narrator for being, yeah. but I was yeah. just I was like sad. I was like, oh, we're hot. Well, let's just go back to the guild hall, get some dinner, and we can all, we can discuss this. Gosh, I have to remember her accent yeah, we'll now. Yeah, we'll have to go find Hughes in the morning. Or maybe he stays at the at the guild hall or at the would he be at watch the house? watch house? Yeah, because he told us to find him there. I mean. This would give us an excuse to go wandering through the shades and, you know. Well, this is a different part of justice. the shades. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What? But this is a different part of the shades. This is like the south side of the shades, right? Never eat how you all hope. Yeah, south side of the shades. <laughs> Does that matter? Does well, that I make mean, it any better? Most of the criminal activity happens on the north side, closer to Murphy, question mark. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's... It's, DM it's, it's, it's kind of scattered throughout, but you know that, um, let me pull up the map really quick. Because we're not in the shades now. No, no you're not. We're you outside are, the wall. You're in a district called the Silt. The, the shades, the Silt, as in like Silt. Silt, silt yeah. as in yeah. sand water. Yeah, yeah water. So, water dust. Yeah. Water. So, um. What? Yeah. Water vest? Water dust. dust. Oh, water. I said water vest. I was like, and Josh was like, yeah. And I was like, what the <laughs> Am I fuck? missing something? <laughs> what is a water vest? Oh, that's funny. Like, well, I go to water vest, it's a white jacket, but it's a uh, yeah. so I'm, I'm really confused. It's a little bit more of the central part of the shades that has a lot of sh- part, like shadier parts of town. Um. So yeah, the it, the middle the middle part of the shades is a little bit more of the sketchy area because as it starts to transition towards the university, the buildings are a lot nicer. So you guys are gonna go back up to the, the guild. Okay, it takes you like probably about ten minutes to kind of just walk all the way back up. You pass through uh, the guards that Do you see them making like the you need that <laughs> um, the spell person. Lavinia was down here. Is anybody else down here that I recognize that's working on this, or are they just in a meeting somewhere else and not actually down here? They were, they were in a meeting. They were. They're still in a meeting, but you recognize that two of the personal security guards of the guild that normally do the day shifts and mm-hmm. some of them do night shifts 
Uh, there's two of them standing over by the wall, like in the cellar, just to make sure nobody's coming and going up the stairs. There's two of them that you recognize. Awesome. Are they Henry, Merle, Jason, Garth, Joanna? <laughs> Gar- it's Garth and Joanna. Garth and Goan- Joanna. Okay. Jarth and Joanna? Yep. <laughs> Jarth, Jarth is their couple name. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm going to try. Hey, Jarth! To both of them as I'm walking by. They, like, shake it's their... It's now. It's they canon. Sh- <laughs> you know, I think it would be possible that maybe they're stationed on guard duty together a lot, time. so that's why. Yep. Uh, they'll be like, hi, Una. Yeah, keep going. Both of them simultaneously. <laughs> Am I, hey, like, Una. gross from crawling up in that vent? Um, not too terrible. Not like, too terribly. Uh, like it wasn't really. Not super oh no! Terrible. Wait, there was yeah. There, there was, was you're wet though because there was water yeah. like pouring through it. Yeah. So yeah. you are kind of dripping wet a little bit. So I just have to go dry off. Yeah. Okay. Is it like stinky stale water or was it like semi fresh like, where I'm not it's gross? Kind of, it's, it's in just, motion. It's just in motion. It's from. It's the water. It smells like in motion water. Yeah. It's a combination of river water, and then it's also a combination of water that was kind of went through the purification stations okay. throughout the city. So it's it's clean-ish. It's about being in river water. River water. water. Okay. Yeah. I can tolerate that. Okay. We're good. <laughs> we got this. That's okay. basically clean. That's yeah. basically clean. It's fine. Um, you guys make your way back upstairs, and you sit down to the dinner table. Um, and there's a lot of people kind of in here tonight with meetings and stuff. It is kind of just that time of day. There's a lot of activity. Servants are bringing out food and plates tonight. There's lamb meals, which is pretty common here. Uh, There's also some sort of unique potato dish where the potatoes are actually like mashed and have like a little bit of like, it seems like cheese on top of it, but you're not 100% sure. Is there some of that southern spice poison in it? (laughs) Um, a little bit. There's like a tiny dash on the top of the potatoes. In order to keep everybody... Just sick and meaty enough. Yep. Yep. Just a little bit. It, yep. It's to build up the tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Iocane powder. Yep. Small doses. Oh my goodness. <laughs> so you guys are up there, and it's you know bustling. You guys manage to sit down and flag down some food. And Is you're... there anyone new that Una hasn't seen before in here? Um. Make a perception check. And by do you mean new as in, like, people who are, uh... People and or person Una mm-hmm. has not seen in the last three, four months. Okay. That was Cat! Ooh, that's that not gonna be good. Eleven. Um, it's kind of hard to tell, because some people are just, you know, hunched over, and it's... The, the lighting in here isn't great at times. No one's standing out. Uh, no one standing out really it looks like a crowd of people but you're kind of also getting a little distracted because like the potatoes are just so damn good um (laughs) have they had these here before or is this like new new um they've had something like this here before um but they didn't have this sort of like cheese on top it has a very like nutty flavor wait the potatoes have a nutty flavor the cheese on top of the potatoes they're nutty, cheesy potatoes with southern poison. Would we know what kind of cheese this is? Give me... As people who have traveled. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I'm thinking, I'm trying to think cheese. of what kind of check this would be. Investigation. Um, would it, let me think. Uh, former DM. I'd say, I'd say What do you mean former? Medicine. Medicine, medicine check. Medicine. Medicine. <laughs> medicine. medicine. I was thinking either nature or just an intelligence check. Animal hand. <laughs> cheese Persuasion. Animals. Persuasion. I tell them what kind of cheese it is. <laughs> you know what? Give uh-huh. me a nature check. Do you know your animal? Oh, Where's Nora? Oh. Where's Nora? Uh, Nora is... Ooh! 17. Wow. Nora is, is eating and reading her book again. Still. Um, with a 17... It was actually when you guys traveled through White Tree, you remember there was a merchant who was selling sort of cheese that he said was made from like these creatures from the Feywild that produce milk, very similar to goats, but Fey goats, if you will. I, and was, I was just going to ask if I might know, but I don't eat, so never mind. <laughs> no. I was like, uh, no, wait, never mind. Wait, Rowan, where did Nora go? She was just here a minute ago. Nora's like, 
I'm right here. I'm just reading it. I'm sorry. Like, oh, me... Jesus. You scared the shit out of me. <laughs> let me. Let me move slightly so you can see her better. Yeah. <laughs> and she's just kind of bent over reading that book again. <laughs> I love this griefing because that's exactly what would happen. <laughs> um, as you guys are sitting there and enjoying the meal, all of a sudden you see uh, Ben approach you and say and there's somebody standing next to him and he says oh perfect i needed to ask you guys if you were willing to do a mission um, sure yeah we're kind of in between missions at the moment well, well, you're, i'm you're... still working on mission but we could probably do something else as well oh perfect um and he's like uh we have a merchant who needs transportation to a town about a day of travel on the road north of here just an escort mission to make sure he's not attacked by bandits. Does that work for you, Una? Did you have to be somewhere in a couple days? Yeah, by the time we drop him off and then get back, that'll be two days, so that should work for me. Is that by horse or on foot? Uh, that's by foot, but you can probably ride in a cart or borrow some horses from the guild. Well, this is a merchant. He has his own cart, but... Oh, okay. I don't know if he can fit all of you in it. I have to see. Um, and then he kind of looks over uh, to one of the tables and he's like, Ah, yes. And he motions to Steve. Would you like to introduce your character? S Steve, I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there, at the table, there is a very small, five foot four, raven looking kanku with dark mm -hmm. black feathers. As he turns and peers over, you see there's a very slight blue hue to the feathers around his eyes. Mm. Wearing tones of earth, so lots of browns and greens. Seems to be some type of makeshift studded leather armor that's adorned over by a robe with some flowing shawls going over the arms. He kind of slowly closes a book. Mm -hmm. Head twitch really fast as he turns and looks at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> and then kind of struggles up out of his chair, seemingly, seemingly favoring his left foot. Mm. And he'll pack up his book and mm -hmm. tuck it under his arm, lift up a backpack, put it over his shoulder, and slowly make his way over to the group. Hmm. Has uh, Una seen a Kanku before? No, you have not. <laughs> None of you have seen a Kanku before. just lean over to his brother. Brother, brother, is that a bird person? <laughs> Una's going to yeah. get super wide-eyed and very <laughs> excited, like the shit-eating grin on mm -hmm. her face. Uh, Nora actually looks up from is her book and has religion? wide eyes as well. Like, she's just like, <gasps> <laughs> like, excited. Um, but Ben is like, ah, yes, uh, this is one of our merchants who travels more in the south, but is made his way back up here. This is Song. Hello, Song. Song Boxwood. Una's gonna get up and, like, go and shake his hand. Be like, I'm Una. I'm Una. You're Una, too? That's so crazy. Oh, no, no, um, he, Song doesn't speak unless it's something repeated to him. But he just spoke. He can only say what he's heard other people yeah, say. He, can only he just say said his name was Song, and then he said, I'm Una. That doesn't make any sense. But then why didn't he say what Ben said? Because Ben said that this is Song, so why didn't he say this is Song? That doesn't make any sense. This is Song. See, but then why did he say I'm Una? See, now I'm confused. <laughs> he was repeating what you said. He was repeating what you said. <laughs> oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Steve, yes. <laughs> Bless know. you, lad. When Steve told me he was going to play a Kenku, it was like a prayer from God had been answered. <laughs> I wrote down a lot of places. <laughs> <Good. laughs> I was so excited. Um, Song, it's nice to meet you. We are Hans and Franz. Hans and Franz? Yeah. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I love it. So what are you a merchant of? Um, so Ben interrupts. Um, Song tends to dabble in a lot of different things, but I believe you said that you are traveling with, um, farming equipment since it's getting closer to harvest time. Why did he say that? I'm sorry, I was just... He has a trouble that. speaking, duh, Hans and Franz. <laughs> or Han, Franz and... Han, one of you two. We are Hans and Franz. Yeah, Song Hans, Hans and Franz and set Franz his and satchel down the ground and start rummaging through it. You see him pull out a very mm -hmm. small-looking heart. Oh. Mm -hmm. And he'll hold it out. Oh, yes. He also does um, make so and also sells his own musical instruments. Yeah, who does he hold it out to? He holds it out to you two. To both of us? Mm -hmm. Bam! <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the face. <laughs> I, I, as, the, as the artist. Um, 
artisan. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at this harp, you can see that while small, he probably appears to be an adolescent youth, but the craftsmanship of this instrument is well beyond somebody of his years should be able to create. Ooh. <laughs> is it made out of wood? Perfectly in tune. Is it, is it made out of wood? It is made out of wood. It's made out of Can wood with very knowledge? slight silver engravings. I could certainly try. Um, yeah, so Steve, um, just a quick recap of what everyone looks like. Let's Everyone describe your character to Steve really quickly. Y'all, okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, Rowan is a, what do we decide, seven? He's like a seven foot tall. Seven foot tall. Um, we call him Arbor Forged. He's a war forge that was crafted out of wood. Okay. Um, so he's a giant tree person. Think, uh, Groot from Guardians of the Galaxy. Small um, Groot. Yep. Adolescent Groot. Yep. Just uh, a little bit, Anxious he's, Groot. he's a little bit more constructed than natural wood. Right. Uh, but he does have elements of natural wood, like a, um, it looks like a small tree on top of his head. Um, roots come down around the skull and, uh, it's tied up in a, a tight bun with a plume of green leaves and some small red berries. Um, and he has Celtic carvings all around all of his joints. All right. Very that cool. he did himself. Very cool. Megan, I know that you showed him a picture. Yes, but I will it describe it. For the <laughs> um, so Una is shorter. She's 5'3", very petite yet curvy. She has this really long brownish red hair that's kept in this mohawk style braid. It's braids on the side of the, like, a giant mohawk braid, kind of keeping it all in. But even with those braids, that braid reaches down to the middle of her back. So you can easily tell that her hair is longer than that. She has these really kind of slightly larger than human brown eyes. Very pale. Um, yeah. She's very cute. Adorable. <laughs> very nice. Bubbly. She she, looks, oh, and how she old has, does she look? She looks like she's about 16, but you can tell that she's probably older than that. And she also has um, these shells and, like, glass beads interwound into her hair as well. And she's wearing leather armor, and then she does have, like, a fur cape with a sigil that is a seal that is chasing fish, and it's kind of creating, like, a nice little circle. Oh, like War Wars in a way? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Beautiful. And that's just like on a leather imprinted crest holding her cape together. Okay. A brooch. It's not a brooch. It's like a clasp. leather. Yeah, clasp. Clasp. Okay. Very cool. Um, Hans and Franz is uh, six foot four, six foot three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six foot three. Six foot three. Gosh, you guys are um, tall. <laughs> what tall is he? <laughs> like a little longer than shoulder length. Uh, blondish. A blonde, kind of sandy blonde hair. Um, he's got big braids in uh, in front of his ears. Um, and he's got small braids and stuff throughout, and there's little fetishes hanging from him. Uh, one of them you would recognize as somebody from the guild is a coin. The, the coin that is like the symbol that you're in the guild uh, has a hole punch through it, and it's tied in tied into his hair. Um, <coughs> and he wears uh, no shirt, but he's got. Um, uh, Really, really dark black cloak, uh, made from like a animal hide, and same with his boots, match the cloak exactly. Um, just you know, brown, brown leathery pants. Um, he's got uh, tattoos of like uh, look like raven feathers coming down from like his his collarbone down as like a mantle, um, and then he's got a tattoo of a serpent around his left arm. And uh, a lot of scars. And then uh, my Hans and Franz um, is a, has shorter hair, um, also sandy blonde, um, um, well trimmed. He wears a um, um, uh, uh, shield on his back most of the time. Um, at the moment, he is also shirtless because. You know, we were in the forge earlier. No, you put your armor <laughs> on. Yeah, yeah, we put it all on when we went yeah. down. Oh, okay. So then, yeah, he would have his armor, which has um, the uh, um, has a uh, symbol, uh, a, a, a Triskelion, um, on it, um, which is the uh, Celtic symbol for infinity. Um, and um, on his shield, it's got uh, a large engraved bee, like a, just a giant honeybee or bumblebee, 
um, on there. Um, and uh, um, he's got a couple of axes on him, but he's well muscled, actually slightly more muscled than his brother. Um, ever so slightly. Because <laughs> of the forge work. I'm just going to rub it in work. every single second. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's why Han, his brother has to do steak and Liter- eggs every day. Literally flexing. <laughs> <laughs> just just yeah, all the like, time. Like, both of us just fucking Major Armstrong. <laughs> <laughs> you seem really sad. Look at my muscles. <laughs> um, and uh, one thing that Andrew didn't mention yes. is we have, um, we have heterochromia. So my left eye is blue. blue, and my right eye is green. My left eye is green, my right eye is blue. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, is your tattoo visible from the graveyard? Yeah, yeah, because okay. the cloak comes, you yeah. know, it, it covers it a little bit, but not much, and then the one on the hand obviously is. Right. Um, and then he has a long sword and a shield, um, and a couple of uh, javelins, a couple of hand axes and a couple of javelins. Yeah. Right. Uh, after you guys introduce yourself, song yeah. Oh, and then Sam, who's not here, but she's at the table. You see a half elf who is about uh, five six. She has purpley blue eyes, kind of plum colored hair that fades a little bit into like more of a reddy purple at the bottom. Um, her hair goes to about like her hips as well, and she is wearing leather armor. And she's got a very cute, like innocent looking face, and she's just kind of like, hi. Very um, soft spoken. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's nice to meet you, Song. He'll nod his head and kind of look at everybody again, and he'll look towards both. Uh, is it Nora? Nora. Nora. Yep. And I apologize. Una. And Una. Mm-hmm. And like Una, what better? He'll look back between the two, and he'll move a little bit closer to kind of get a better view. And as he moves closer, you can see that where his left eye would be, it seems as though the socket there is a little indented, as if it was pushed in. <laughs> And also on the left side of his beak near his nostril, there's a crack that's been formed. Oh. And as he gets closer, when you hear him breathe in, you can hear a slight whistling noise. Mm. Mm. I can't imitate it. I would. I can't whistle. <laughs> yeah, I can't whistle. Thank you, sound effect man. <laughs> Looking between both of them, he'll just go, very pretty. Aww. Aww. Una's going to give him a hug. <laughs> Tora will right. give him a hug, too. How big are, how tall are you? Okay, yeah. so yeah, we're like the same hug. <laughs> and he is 60 pounds. Oh, okay. I'm like gonna crush him, but that's okay. okay. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, chicken tonight, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so sad. He will. That's not what they actually say. <laughs> Send it in, boys. You said. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um. It's repeated. No, Nora, Nora uh, just hugs him at the same time Una does, and it's kind of like it, It's almost like one of those moments in an anime. Brother, what is that squeeing noise? <laughs> yes. So they are broken. <laughs> Rowan uses. <your sister. laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Song can react to this however he wants. He but... he'll probably kind of tense up, not just not sure what to do, mm-hmm. but then he'll um, lightly pat them with his hands. <laughs> <laughs> not sure. <laughs> not sure entirely what to do. As <laughs> <to you>. uh, <laughs> Uh, ben is like, well, it seems like you'll all get along fine. Uh, yes, they will be escorting you to Meyerfield, and of course, as part of your membership, we'll be covering the fee for protection there. So this is worth a thousand gold if you success. How much? A thousand gold for them to guard you, which you know, Steve, your merchandise is worth more than that, so that's pretty normal. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, uh, and he says, well then, and then when you return, um, Ponder will, of course, pay you out, same as before, and uh, it sounds like... Ben, I have a question. Yes. Do the guild, can we get horses? Or do we have to rent them? Do we buy them? What do we do? Um, you can have the, you can use ones of the guild. We have ones that you can um, take out at no cost. Of course, if they are injured or require... Uh, medical care after the mission, then we will have to deduct that if you're not treating them nicely or feeding them. Um, but you can rent them from us. They just have to be returned. Rent them or borrow them? I uh, borrow them. So then, is this escort there and back, or escort there and come back on their own? Uh, will you require an escort mission back, Song, or are you going to stay north and then keep going north? The second? You're going to keep going north afterwards? I'm assuming you're selling all your goods then in Meyerfield. All right. Um, 
sounds acceptable. So just there, you can, re- yes, just there. The thousand there. So then why you only need a, a guy protection there? Would you need protection beyond that as well? That's highway robbery. Well, <laughs> what the anyway? <laughs> he, he, he shakes his head very vigorously and then pulls out his book and starts writing in it. Okay. Um, Ben's like, Song, do you need me to stay with you? I, I co- Guildmaster Roberts would like me to come back to take care of a, a small matter. Um, Don't you mean Guildmaster Williams? His first name is Robert. You said Roberts. His first name is Robert. Yeah, it is Robert. Yeah, sorry. It's it's been a long day. You you should know. Is there, any, is there anything that we could do? Anything we should know about? Not really. It's more of just meetings and the costs of enchantment and time and um, you know things things that don't need to be discussed, really. Why? I'm suspicious, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> Shit has just gotten real weird. Um. Oh, can I talk to you two for just a moment? Uh, and then he like. Motions you. Which two? You two, Hans and Franz. Okay. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. His name is Ben. He kind of <laughs> he kind of pulls you away and um towards one of the private dining rooms, and he explains. I would appreciate you not mentioning the break in in front of Song. No problem. I mean, that's why. I didn't think that we should mention. That's why. Of that's Song. that's why I didn't want to talk. I know that you guys are. Actively investigating what's going on with the break-in. It's just this looks really it's bad. Yeah, I it understand. looks bad on us, and I don't want to shake confidence in our merchants that we can protect their. Well, we protected it anyway. I know. Ben, we have your back. We're well, a good man. We tell Guildmaster Williams <laughs> we have his back as well. Mm-hmm. It's been good um, to us. We will be good to you. Thank you. Will you will you do a small favor for me? Of course. Keep having Una team up with you. She's gone on a lot of missions on her own since starting, and it's. I I just want to make sure that she's safe. And going out alone on mission can be a little dangerous. And I think that she seems fairly happy with you traveling with you. I mean, it's not really a favor because she's working with us right now. But yes, okay. as long as she's willing to work with us, I have no problem. She's very capable. Yes, she is. It's just, you know, she's 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 young and she tends to, you know, just keep just keep an eye out for her. She's like family to me. No problem. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Why not? Little kiss, kiss on the cheek. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll, I'll shake. I'll reach out to okay. the boss was on there. Ben will. Ben will shake your hand, and you can see Ben looks really tired, like uh, just exhausted. My hand hurts. That's a little bit much, brother. What? Oh, oh, I want to use my foot. Very, very happy. So, when do you want to leave? Like one a.m. Oh yeah, what did you start writing out? Once, yeah. once we settle, like once we settle, whatever Andrew's looking up. Um, he just casting yeah. a spell. So what he wrote down in the book was the phrase, "Only that portion of the highway is dangerous." Mm. So mm-hmm. four a.m., five a.m., <laughs> six a.m., seven a.m. Seven a.m. Seven a.m. tomorrow. Okay, <laughs> we we can do that. I'll, I'll make sure that we get that done. Mm-hmm. Um. Good job. <laughs> Una got this. <laughs> I love how Una is just kind of like, all right, I know how to keep getting, I know how to get answers. I'll just keep talking. Eventually he'll latch on to the thing. Eventually exactly. he'll repeat something what's, I say. What's your animal handling? Oh, God. <laughs> how dare you? Oh, I have a plus four. I have a plus one. This is good. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but technically, it is a bird. And it, but he's a humanoid. He yeah. doesn't know. Right. Well, that hands on the leg exhaustion. This keeps going the way it's going. I might have used some of the phrases on the second page. <laughs> That's the insult. So, did we see oh, his oh, book oh, that he put away? Did Una see it when he was putting it away? It's just a plainly wrapped mm-hmm. little journal with open pages that just seems to have words and sentences. Okay. Yep. I was just curious if Una would have thought. 
He would have seen him put it away after Ben pointed out, like, oh, here he is. Come over here. Um, I guess cutting back, anything else with you two and Ben? Um, yeah. Wow. Um, ben will tell you, though, in the morning, um, when he comes back over with you guys, in the morning, um, you can go to the stables with um, Song, who we're lodging his cart and his merchandise for tonight, and then you can take, and his own horses, and you can either rent your own horses, Song, unless you think that they could all fit in your um, cart. He'll kind of motion with his hands, like, maybe Song? Maybe so. Looking at the two bigger ones, like, <laughs> shrugging. The three, three bigger, bigger ones. Yes. <laughs> the three bigger ones. Yeah. But we will walk on horses anyway. Yeah. We can. You. So I bring with them. Yes. Just speak to Arthur. Show him your badges in the morning, and then. Um, Birds of a feather. Arthur. Yeah. Arthur. <laughs> Arthur. Arthur. Nope. No, his name is just Arthur. He just. Arthur, Arthur. Pendragon. Oh yep. boy. <laughs> yep, Arthur Pendragon. Uh, it's a rather absurd name. I think he made it up himself, but <laughs> <laughs> when uh, Arthur Pendragon. When when Ben mentions the um the tokens, the medallions, yep. Rowan says, um, I have already started crafting a uh, way to wear it permanently. Oh, how very nice. It's very good craftsmanship work. Why thank you. <laughs> Uh, so then it's just kind of do whatever for the night then? Yeah, basically you guys can chill out. It's, I mean, it's, it's still light out because it's summer, so you have a few more hours of daylight, but. Oh, no. the... Sorry. No, the... But it is getting, it is going to probably, the sun's going to probably set within the next, like, hour. What was the two. surname that Ben gave for song? Boxwood. Boxwood. Uh... <clears throat> While we're standing there? Mm-hmm. If there's just like a knife or a fork on the table, Song's just gonna pick it up and just start kind of like spinning it around in his fingers. <laughs> sure, that's there. You can just grab one off the table. Yeah. So are we done eating after? Is that after we're done eating when Ben came up? Yeah. Uh, well, it's still kind of early, but kind of late. Uh, Hans and Franz will go out. Uh, he'll probably go do some exercising down in the training room, and then he'll probably go do some running along the riverbank. Okay. Uh, do, do some swimming and stuff, mm-hmm. and then come back, take a bath. And- Bit. Okay. Um, and then, but he will see if Nora wants to. Uh, there's like a, it's it's kind of calm and stuff. There's like a, uh, just kind of a little girl out there and stuff walking around with her doll though, <laughs> and she kind of like looks at you like, like I don't know who you are, but hey. Wait, what? Yeah. There's just a little girl on the bank and stuff walking around with her doll. Oh, after what? while you're while you're swimming. Okay, uh, but but before I go down to the training room to do like mm-hmm. just exercises, I'll ask Nora if she wants to. No, no, I'm, I'm good. Thank you for asking. And she's just kind of like still into her book. Okay. Um, and yeah, so then after dinner, um, uh, I would, uh, go back to the forge okay. to continue working on, uh, the sword. All right. Um, we'll say, cause you started working on that at like for how long are you gonna work on it? Like how many hours into the evening are you gonna work on it for? Um, he would probably um, work um, for uh, until he can get the. I mean, he he would have to pretty much work on it until it's done. Um, because like while we went and did that investigating. He would have left it in the hot coals so it doesn't completely cool. Okay. Um, Don't want to leave it there too long. Yeah, right. Actually, Hans and Franz would probably go with his brother in, in that oh, okay. case to run Help. the bellows and stuff. Right. Okay. Which is still um, a workout. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it would it would probably be well after midnight before it's actually like done. Yeah. All right. Enchantment TBD. Yep, that's fine. We'll mark that. The, just make your note of that you completed at least the sword okay. for that part. Who did who did Rowan talk to about getting spare wood? At the um, there was like a like a young teenager who was one of the servants. Uh, his name was Sam. Okay. He'll uh, he'll he'll look around and try and find Sam specifically again. Okay. Um, you're kind of sitting there for a little bit, which is fine, because Nora is still reading her books, and, uh, you end up seeing him walk by with, um, to collect plates from people who are done eating. Um, 
Um, Sam. Hello. Oh. oh, it's you again. Um, did that would work out for you, all right? Um, and he he presents his his chest with <laughs> the inlaid. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll be damn, that's pretty good. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if I could get a slightly larger piece of wood this time. Oh sure, here. Um, why don't you come back to the kitchen with me? We'll see if we can find some. Okay. Um, and he'll take you back into the kitchen and like uh. You can look through the wood pile again and grab a piece. Probably, um, roughly the size of the heart. Una sort of put a worm in, in Rowan's ear <laughs> about crafting a heart. Yeah. So when he mentions about it for leading him into the kitchen, uh-huh. Song will look up and just kind of nervously look back and forth between them and just go, birds belong in the pan. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, oh sad. So sad. Is Anna still sitting there with Song? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> And 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 Nora's sitting there. Birds belong yeah. in the pan. Okay. Birds don't belong in the pan. Not birds like you. <laughs> Did someone try to is. eat you? Is that what happened? Did someone hit you? Someone hit you with a pan. Who hit you with a pan? Was it a big guy? Small guy? Big girl? Small girl? <laughs> Gob- small girl? Like me? Small? Smaller? Green? Blue, white, <laughs> red. <laughs> you see Song put his, ha- his hands and <laughs> his head into his hands. Or is that just Steve? You kind of brought this on yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> he, he'll get up and just walk to, he'll walk to the edge of the room. And just, <laughs> oh, what a broken. <laughs> Uh, Nora will kind of like look up from her book and she's like, I wondered, I wondered about it with, um, with his, the side of his head. I wonder if he just got hit really bad. Maybe he's sensitive about it. Maybe. I'm surprised that he said that about himself. But I'm kind of curious you hit him in the head then. Well. There's some small girl that hit him. Uh, Probably that one that was on the riverbank with her teddy bear. Was it his, like, mom? (laughs) How dare you? I saved her teddy bear. (laughs) Or doll, whatever it was. Yeah, Rowan Rowan is back with his piece of of wood by now. And he missed that entire thing. You see Rowan come back with a massive piece of... Yeah. Rowan comes back from the kitchen, and he has this massive piece of wood. But he sees that Song is now kind of over off in the corner a little bit. And Nora and Una are talking kind of, like, a little concerned. Have massive pieces of wood in the kitchen. For the fire. firewood. Well, okay, well, it's, like, it's probably like no, a foot like a long. long. Yeah, a yeah. very yeah. small, like because you got. Unless they gave you like a cutting board that you're gonna. Use. <laughs> they have <laughs> stuff that no, they have stuff. They have stuff that they haven't chopped up super small yet that they keep indoors. So inside or inside? No, they have it inside in case it rains. So it's there's. Smart. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Or maybe he just grabbed like the giant stub that they chop wood on. Maybe that's what this he will grabbed. do. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Give me a strength check. Give me a strength check. Give me a strength check. Give me a chopping stone. Um, no, so basically, yeah. I wonder if it was his mom. I don't know. <laughs> the song just stays over uh, by himself for the rest of the night, or. He's probably going to go over there, and as he's sitting there to take his mind kind of off what he just said, he's going to be probably working on the, the harp and just retuning it, taking strings out. And... Okay. Here, like, like the one that he presented to Hans and Franz? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Who's going to go over I it? I guess and... I'll retroactively give that back. Song will hit here first. <laughs> <laughs> it's collateral. Um, Una's going to go over and play on her flute next to as when he pulls out the harp. Okay. She, so she's going to pull out her flute and play a song from her village. <laughs> Alright, does Song so, actually start playing or is he tuning space. his instrument? You know, he's listening. Okay. And then as she gets a couple of verses in, he will start to mimic the flute mm. with his mouth. Okay. <laughs> so yeah. cool! <laughs> yeah, it's really strange. Like, it is exactly it look. it sounds exactly like there's another person playing a flute exactly tuned like yours right next to you. There's a perfect mimicry, but there's a little it's bit like of a pause, so know, it's right? almost like a, an, it's almost like, um, it's like the way. Echo. yeah, delay. a little, a little bit of a delay, but it's, it is very, very close. It, it <laughs> sounds really cool. It sounds like there's just a duet going on. 
<laughs> oh god. You've never seen anything quite like this before. Okay, I'd probably play like 10 songs. Like, just because I'm so fascinated. I'm just going to basically do that the whole night, just playing a bunch of different folk songs All that right, you don't remember. Keep up, and he will perfectly mimic everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> so you guys do this for the evening, and there's a lot of people who are there for dinner, have like um, servants who are eating and also merchants who are conducting business, and they really seem to enjoy the performance and kind of like, you know, look over and like after you guys stop a song like you know there'll be some clapping and stuff like that and do we get any coin i was gonna say put out a hat <laughs> <laughs> you put out a hat with that song we'll actually look around to everybody that's gathered around and he'll pull out a heart and just go <laughs> <laughs> and look at everybody all right give me um one of you tell me how you're holding up the harp yes yeah actually when you do that because ron didn't get a look at it he'll go over and he'll just sort of inspect it and then he'll hand it back. Thank you. <laughs> uh, you guys. You must pay. <laughs> you guys get about four gold, and then you get uh thirty silver pieces. What now? I'll let you have it. You don't want it. I'm totally taking it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll point to the and I'll point to her, huh. <laughs> indicating that she should get a good she played with. Okay. I Absolutely like it. Whistled. <laughs> and nobody offers anything for his flute or for his harp. He's not playing his harp. He's playing he his beak. He, he took out the harp oh. and was like, "Hey, motherfuckers, do we want this?" <laughs> Is that what you were doing? I didn't miss implying it. if anybody would want to hear him play. Oh yeah, oh. if they if they'll they'll kind of like so. motion that they would like to hear your harp then, if like you're willing. All right, so yeah, he'll kind of slowly ease his way down into a chair, sticking his left leg kind of out straight. Okay. And he'll set the harp in his lap, and then you'll hear him just kind of run his hands over it, and then. Crack his knuckles, mm -hmm. and he will begin to play. Song's so. demeanor is just very uh, focused and it's very driven, and he's just playing this song. And um, it's more than him just playing it, though. You can hear him making accompanying pieces with his voice as well and his mimicry of it, ability, where it almost sounds like there's multiple musicians playing this beautiful heartbreaking song and it's just so sad like you actually see a couple people like stop talking and listening to it or, you know, Rowan, Rowan completely stops what he's doing and is just like engrossed in him there's a couple people who look a little even misty eyed by it like it's, it's just a very moving performance oddly enough it seems as though he's doing this on rhythm as if <coughs> it's just natural have we heard this melody before any of us mm -mm. you've never heard this song before you're kind of suspecting maybe he composed it. Ooh. We're just gonna try to memorize that. This is a very beautiful song. Song. Song? He'll song. Turn song. his mouth as he's playing. Yeah, you can keep this up for as long as you want. You end up getting <laughs> Una's gonna give him a gold. <laughs> to oh. Totally, totally worth it. You get nine gold for this. Wow. <laughs> the song itself is probably about a minute and a half. Oh, oh wrong way. What was the town that, that Ben tasked us to go to? With Meyerfield. Meyerfield? Um, one thing that Hans and friends will do while we're um, kind of, you know, at some point, if Hans and friends take a break from the forge, um, he will go um, and try and find... Uh, is there some sort of like a storehouse here where he gets supplies for the road? Yeah, there's some... Um... I changed the music because you guys are... I really oh. picked up something. <laughs> now here's the double kick drum. <laughs> <laughs> it starts beatboxing. Is this is slipping? That is cool. Oh, I want that monitor. <laughs> and I want out. Um, you... I don't know. Who do you ask? I mean... Who would, would you just go... the servants? I, is, if Ben's around, mm -hmm. if Ponder's around... Well, I am going to look for better ponds, but if I see them... Um, you, kind of, you kind of are walking around, and you kind of head over one way, and you open, like, one of the doors across from the forge, and it looks like it's the kitchen, and there is kind of a very, like, um, very chubby-looking dwarf with kind of salt-and-pepper hair, um, who is sitting there drinking a bottle of sherry, and uh, <laughs> is kind of like, Oh, what do you want? 
Hi, this is good to meet you. My name is Hans and Franz. We are Hans and Franz. Uh, Falstaff at your, at your pleasure. What can I get for you? Falstaff? Falstaff is his name. Oh. Um, we are going on the mission for the guild tomorrow, which we got for a couple of days. I was wondering if we could get some supplies. Oh, sure. There's a couple, the pantry's right over there. Just help yourself to anything you want. Do I have to take it out of inventory, let you know what I take? I don't care. That's a horrible value. <laughs> Okay. Uh, he will be talking to Ben about this. <laughs> um, oh, whistleblower, brother. <laughs> hey, man. Supplies fucking make or break a guild. Yeah. Uh, he will go in and, and take um, um, probably some fruits and stuff for the next day. And then, you know, more trail rations just in case it's lots of takes. He'd probably, he'd probably get supplies for, you know, the, the four of us. Because I would include Song in this. Um, and now, Buff, I mean, is Nora? Yeah, Nora is going to come with you. She's okay. just in the Pokeball. So, so supplies for five for probably, uh, I would say five days worth of supplies for all of us. Just I don't need supplies. Six. He doesn't need food. I don't need uh, food. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's why I didn't include it. I just need water. As the man who's in charge well, of water. Well, <laughs> water. We can find water on the road. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't like water. Everybody has no, water. No, everybody has water. Oh, yeah. All right. If you got to pee, water the tree. Uh, <laughs> That's exactly what uh, I thought. He just stand in our... Slow down he starts, there. He starts looking jaundiced after a while. <laughs> anyway, so but, yes, so he will get supplies for five people. Look, just because you like fetishes in your hair doesn't mean... You usually got I didn't say his hair. I you usually got a pay extra for that. <laughs> <laughs> No golden uh, showers, no golden showers. Before we go to bed, Una wants to try to make uh, some good berries too. Okay, you can do so, that. Because they're um, good for 24 hours. Hey, old travelers, and well met. Thank you for listening to our podcast. This is a totally new experience for all of us, and we're glad that you're here with us. Our story lives in many places, but all of them lead back to Patreon. Full episodes of our podcast are released every two weeks on our Patreon for subscribers only. And half episodes of our sessions are available weekly on YouTube and wherever you find podcasts starting the following week. So, if you hate waiting, subscribe to us on Patreon for early access. If you like the show, consider sharing it on Twitter using hashtag TheWesterverse. You can also follow us all over other social media accounts named TheWesterverse for updates and other RPG-related content. That about wraps it up for our shameless plugs. Now, onward, adventurers! So, you guys retire into the hireling quarters, um, and Song, because you are a member, and you actually get like a private room and stuff that is reserved for traveling merchants and a place to stay. So you have your own private room for the night. Yeah. Could Una try to memorize a song that he was playing to see if she can mimic it? Give me an intelligence roll. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, I'm kind of intelligent. Don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. Don't fail me now. Fuck, it failed me. <laughs> uh, nine, without proficiency. Um, You try, and it, it's... It's kind of like the crappy recorder version of the song. Okay. It's just, it's just not quite. Ends up just being a hot cross. Like you're, you're, you're sitting there in your bunk and you're trying to play, and then it just, it doesn't sound very good. You get a I'm pillow. gonna have to listen. Yeah, yeah bear just in mind. Chucked across bear in mind. Go to sleep. Who he learned it from? Oh yeah. yeah. Someone from across um, the room just like shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it up, the game. I have a day of travel tomorrow. It's fine. We got this. <laughs> Um, anyone else doing anything for the uh, night? Yeah, I wasn't done. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, That's strike one. Uh, I get 12. That's why I asked. Song will go down to the stables and he will groom his horses before he goes to bed. Okay, you can do that. <laughs> Don't stab anyone, Andrew. That was only strike two. You're good. That's, that's yeah. I'm looking uh, at you. Yes. Hans Brothers will also try to find um, uh, lamps, oil, um, you know, uh, fresh, a fresh supply of tinder, uh, which I know that he can get out in the wild, but if he doesn't have to, he won't. Um, probably try to find a new flint um, as mm-hmm. well, just because him and his brother haven't 
Oh, the bottle. Sure. Let me, let me you know, put, put um, a You get a, ser- you kind of ask a servant where it would be, and they're like, oh, um, go down to the alchemist's office. It's the last door on the left over here. He's got uh, Tinder and all that stuff. Um, we have the oil, like lamp oil and lights. And he's got, yeah, he's got all the stuff in there. Okay, um, we try to keep everything that's flammable in one area. Since I don't know what everybody has in their packs, you probably try and get at least another fifty feet of rope. Um, <laughs> um, tents for all of us. Um, yeah. They don't have um. They have more of a either. They have more of like bigger tents that can kind well, of fit fine. two to yeah, three well, people. Yeah. So yeah. So, um, but so funny when they see the car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, when you go to the uh, alchemist's office and kind of like knock, you see like this really um, old looking hunched over creature. It's kind of got grayish green skin and massive ears and big eyes and kind of like pointy teeth and like super long claws. And he's wearing like a little red cloak and he's got like little glasses on and he's like, oh, yes, (laughs) yes, how can I help you? Yes, my name, uh, we are Hans and Franz. It's good to meet you. What is your name? Oh, I'm Luthius. Luthius? Luthius. I'm very curious. I've never seen one of your kind. What are you? Oh, I'm a goblin, my boy. And what oh, are have you? I, have I seen? Would I recognize that then? Mm-hmm. Mm, I don't think it's so. No, you, you didn't know. You've yeah, never seen a goblin. I'm not a goblin as well. Oh, that's true. And I was yeah. Like, the other Hans and Franz. Yeah, yeah the other Hans and Franz. Both. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Because yeah. he told me about it. So I'm like, my brother met one of your kindred yesterday. Earlier today? Yeah, earlier yeah, today. today. Earlier today. He said it was a, quite the experience. I'm glad I've been able to meet one myself. Um, I'm glad to meet. One of you, you have very interesting eyes, young man. I must be pretty rare and lucky. Huh. I don't know. My brother would know more about it. His are opposite of mine. Really? Yes. Siblings with... with Twins. Th- oh, my God. You're twin. Oh, well, <laughs> if you were from the Faerum, I'd say that you were, like, blessed in some way by the, the, the world. Huh. What a funny world. Anyway, what can I what can I help you with? Yes, we are going on the trip for the... A mission for the guild, and I need some supplies such as lamp, lamp oil, lamps, rope, uh, some a box of tinder, mm-hmm. some flint. Basically, everything to make sure you don't oh, yeah. die of exposure. Yes, tents. Tents. I can't help you with the rope and tents, but I can do the lanterns, the tinder, the the flint, and all that for you. Just wait a minute here, and he um kind of like goes through. Uh, he's got all of these like lined cabinets Mm -hmm. that all have like different uh writing on them you don't recognize the writing but he seems to know what he's looking for and he's just like hmm hmm ah yes and then he goes and gets like a little step stool and he kind of like drops it under climbs up it and pulls something from the top shelf and he's like how how much do you need how much what how much tinder and flint do you need how many days are you (laughs) traveling for a a box of Tinder, what is it going to be? Just like a box like this and just oh, have like wood shavings yeah. in it? I know. That's, <laughs> that, that's what okay. I'm explaining. He'll and, be like, ah, oh, here's, here's your box, catch, and he'll throw it to you. <laughs> and, I mean, Flint, I just need a piece of like safety yeah, bags. No, I know. I said, yeah. here's your box of Tinder. Um, Flint. He'll throw it to you. And then he's like, here's your here's your Flint, and he'll toss it to you. Um, like, he just literally tosses it over his shoulder. Like, he doesn't even look back and see if you're there to catch it. Okay. Well. And, Oil, yep. Got to, what kind of oil you want? I've got Crap. whale oil. I've got fish oil. I've got fish oil. Uh, <laughs> do you need candle some, oil. Do you need from, some whale oil and some beef? Got some. <laughs> you know, from, from us traveling, I mean, what kind of oil would he get? I don't know. Um. What would be good for lamp oil? Lamp oil. Yeah, lamp oil. Yeah, you could just say lamp oil. <laughs> Which is what I did say. Okay. Okay. Oh, I mean, you just want the standard stuff? It's not as much fun to burn, but sure, I can get you that. I mean, I'll take some of the other if you have extra. Hmm. You never know what you can run into out there. You know, because I think it'll be a... F- have you ever been near the sea? Yes. Did you like it? Yeah. All right, I'll give you some but- fish oil. It makes things really fun. Okay, so how much fish oil does he give me? <laughs> um, he gives you, like, uh... A pint. A- how many flasks were <laughs> enough for a day of that, and then he gives you four days worth of um, 
lamp oil, which is only enough for like the evenings and dark hours. Oh so. wait, it's fish oil for a lamp? I don't know. I'm really busy. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm trying to be unique, okay? It gives you, it gives you the damn oil. It's a mix between fish oil but, and, and whale oil, yeah. which is why you can use it on a lamp and it like turns well, into a lamp oil. Yeah. What is with a lamp oil? Yeah. And then mundane lamp oil. And then he gives you like a day's worth of like this fish oil that supposedly works on lamps. Yeah, man. Don't look at give fish oil in the mouth. I hear it's real good for you. Um, but, I mean, like, so I'm asking because. If I want to use this fish oil in combat, yeah. how much do I do I have a vial I throw at something? Do I have ten vials? No, I it would be enough to like let's think. I'm thinking of how much oil a lamp would have in it. Probably at least sixteen ounces. That's a shit you know, of fish oil. You know, though, I I have to say it probably would be better if um. No, you can have the oil if you want, but have you ever thought of getting like magical light sources? My brother does that, but just to be safe. Oh, well, I can't blame you for being overprepared. Um, let's see, you got your tinder, you got your oil, I have some lamps here for you. Is there anything else you need? I know you said you need a rope and tents, that's not quite my, uh, storage expertise, but you could go over to... Who the fuck would have that? Um... I don't know where they keep that. Go ask one of the other, uh, servants for that. Uh, I... Your goblin was much ruder than mine. <laughs> um, is there anything in here that you maybe want to see if it works as well as you think it does? Well, that's... We are going on the mission for the guild. That depends. I get pretty How's frisky, it... my friend. Oh, you like dangerous things? Yes. Let me, let me see if I've got some things that could be tested out. <laughs> and that is how Hans and Franz Andrew lost his finger. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I've got a brother. They call him a hand and friends now. <laughs> <laughs> Handles friends. Ooh. You know, I haven't really tested this yet, so I don't really know what it's going to do, but if it works, it'll make you invisible for a minute. Is it a potion? Yeah, it's a potion. Well, you know, I will give it a try. Thank you, sir. And he just chucks <laughs> it across the room. Catch! Uh, that one, that one, you want to be careful. You don't want to drink that one. You want to rub it on your skin. That is good to know. <laughs> Otherwise, your inside's going visible. <laughs> yeah, it's not as effective. What does it do? It's pronounced, say, ah. it's pronounced analgesic, not analgesic. Oh my god. Your mouth. <laughs> has, the last one I made had a tendency to give you a really bad headache, so just, just a warning. That is okay. I can remove most, I can heal most ailments and cure most diseases. Ah. Well, you're good to go then. Enjoy that. It's a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Shake his hand. Stop by again anytime you need anything. Yes, I think my brother would enjoy you, enjoy your company as well. I will bring him by sometime. Oh, perfect. I enjoy it, Set. Have a good day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> he will go and find another servant, I guess. And... You find um, the person who's kind of in charge of like the general housekeeping of the guild, and her name is Isabel, and she g- is able to direct you to where they keep the the rope and the tents and the things. And is it like it like there's kind of like a big storage room of just leftover equipment here and stuff. Like some of the forgotten. tents, like the tents aren't like brand new. They kind of look like they've been used a lot, and there's some some patching on it where you're like. Maybe that'll hold. I think it'll be okay. So you said they would sleep like two to three. Two to three, yeah. For... So I'll grab three of them. Yeah. <clears throat> not knowing if Rowan would sleep in ten or not, he will grab three tents. <laughs> um, he, he at this point he would have like um, a pile set up. I mean, is there like a staging area for groups going out, or like if not that, then by his bed he would start st- like piling the supplies. There's a little bit of a an area outside the storage room where it has um, some boxes, and then you can see that there is a piece of chalk and some slate that you can write on, like, you know, whose stuff this is, and, like, when you're going out and when you'll be back with it, so. Yeah, I'll just put um, Hans and Franz group um, on our stuff. Does anyone else have anything they want to do? I know you are going to go out and t- see your horses and make sure yeah, they're okay. And- yeah. Check their tack and all that. They're in good condition and stuff. It looks like the the stable, like the the groom, was taking pretty good care of them and stuff. And he's just kind of sitting in like half asleep now at this time of night. Um, looks like he he was studying some like 
books and stuff and like fell asleep in his little cot out there so uh while or once he's done grooming his horses he's gonna go through his cart just kind of make sure everything's tied down he's gonna mm-hmm. uh, double check the shelf that doubles up as a bunk make sure that that's still secured yep uh, he's gonna go over the tarpings over his cart to make sure that still holds up yep and you know that they have guards like some of the private guards of the guild hall like outside the stables and stuff and they do patrols through to check this is side. more so Making sure that it's prepared for his journey, because since it doubles up as a campsite for him, he's yeah. just making sure it'll keep up to wear sure. and tear. Sure. Um, yeah. And then once he makes his way up to the room, if the stable boy is still asleep, he'll set a gold on his lap and make his way up to uh, up to the room. Yeah. He's not really a boy. He's more of a... He's, stable boy's yeah. a term. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so you you successfully do that. Your horses were happy to see you. And then you make it your way to your own private room, and... As long as there's nothing else anyone wants to do for the night, um... Yeah, there's... I, I'm drawing some stuff. Um, <laughs> if you can get a map of the area we're going... Sure. Um, a map, is there a river? Are we, do we follow a river north? Um, let me look at my world map really quickly. No problem. You're gonna be kind of following the... Like, the mountains will stay to your, um... North. Your, yeah, the west side of you, because... Most of the night, Rowan's just working on the heart. Yeah. You're able to get a rough map of, like, the road ahead and stuff. And it looks like this goes through Meyerfield, and then it, like, it it kind of curves with the mountains and keeps, because the mountains peak up a little bit and start going east, so you go parallel with them, and then you get to Meyerfield, and then you, there's another, probably day's worth of travel before another, like, bigger town. Um, and then it just keeps going north and up and then it looks like it ends on the coast up ahead but that's like days and days and days goes? of travel weeks we're of travel going to Myers, yeah you're right? only going to Meyerfield, which okay. is only about like a day's travel okay. has una been there before um give me a percentile no. <laughs> these ones look pretty 71 yeah you went through there um actually when you came Ah, you probably would have gone through there when you came from uh, Breakspear. Okay. Um, was there a river along the way, though? Um, there's a river for part of the way. You recognize it as the Sorrel. Where we came down? No, you came down the Dakra, which comes from the mountains. Like That's the big one. That's the big one. There's a smaller one that goes through the city of Fayen next mm-hmm. to it, and uh, it's called the Sorella. And that one goes a little bit more outside the forest, and it does come from the mountains, but... It's outside a little bit. So you will be following it for probably, it looks like, the first couple hours of your journey. Okay. Um, so then he will look for... Did did everybody have packs that he's seen? Song was carrying one over his You know that Nora and Rowan had one for sure because mm-hmm. you traveled with them on the boat yep. ride down here. Um, you've seen Una has a bag next to her bed and you know that she's gone out traveling before as an experienced member. So yeah, you're assuming everyone has okay. packs. Um, so... Um, he will. Oh God, dang it, I just had it here. <laughs> um, he look for a shovel or two if he can get one. Um, we're not going near the mountains, so we don't go climbing just yet. You you know it's basically looking at the map. It looks kind of like the terrain is marked as hilly, and then it kind of has some fields in between there. But it, it's not really too. You shouldn't be doing any mountain climbing. Okay. Um, I don't know if... Well, did uh, Nora have a bedroll? Yes, you've okay. seen Nora has a bedroll. Um, I, don't, I haven't seen Una with one, so he will put one out there, and if we don't use it, we'll okay. put it back. Um, I think that'd do it for now. All right. Yeah, I don't think... I mean, I want to get a grappling hook, but I don't think he'd look for it. <laughs> <laughs> I might need a grappling it. hook it's in the hill. weapon, bro. Yeah, I know. That's why I want to get one, but... I'm going to hook me a land fish. Yeah. Wham! And then this will be stuff that he's. Uh, I'm gonna also start putting together a list of things that yeah. Hans and Franz will want to start buying on his own, sure. so he doesn't have to use. So that he knows it's good stuff. Yeah. Not saying that the guild doesn't have nice stuff. It's but more it's, 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 it's used. used stuff. Yeah. And and he wants he wants his own stuff just in case. Oh no, that's totally understandable. Um. But yeah, so he'll 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 grab a couple shovels and, and just mm-hmm. some more stuff for some basic outdoorsy sure. things. Okay. Um. Nobody has anything else. I'm good. All right. We're gonna say you go to bed and orc attack and no, uh, you guys managed to rest pretty peacefully through the night. Uh, Steve, after your character after being on the road for 
a while. It feels really good to be in like a nice feathered bed. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Sleeping on his kin. You get lose. Yeah. <laughs> now we're at the line. <laughs> That's if you knew who his family was. Oh, whoa. whoa. Backstory. Um. <laughs> Did Una make a correct guess? Oh. <laughs> um, and his mother hit him with a pan. And it's said, possible. Small lady, small bird. <laughs> <It> says, <laughs> cannibals. Um. Yeah. So you guys wake up early in the morning, I'm assuming. Yes. It's kind of strange. You guys have been getting up later every morning, and now you're back kind of on a early oh, schedule. Goodness. It's a little strange. Uh, it is super busy during breakfast time. Like, there's just, like, chaos. Everyone's running around and stuff. Um, you see Song in there. He's... Are you eating breakfast? Song? Yeah, I'm, I'm just sitting down to a plate with uh, utensils around, and I actually reach in my pocket and pull out that fork <laughs> that I was messing around with. Okay. I'm going to begin eating. <laughs> Leaving the other utensils alone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys can go get breakfast though. Yep. Yeah, we'll go and sit next to Song and start eating. Hello, Song. Hello. How are you this morning? Good job. <laughs> good, good. So, where are you from? You know, kind of like gesture around, just point to the whole building. You're from the guild? Are you from Thayden? And he'll nod. You're not from Thayden. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought this was the town. No. Oh, no, no. I apologize. Yeah, yeah. No. Sorry. You're from much further south. Yeah, Dragon is a dragon. You're from the Dragon's Claw, which is Dragon's the very Claw, yeah, yeah. bottom of the map. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, uh, yeah, so correct that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, so you can I say. ask if you're from Thayden. Yeah, he'll shake his head no, because that's the name of the town, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, right. yeah he'll, he'll shake his head no. Are you from the north? He'll south. Take the opposite direction. Ben said not. south yesterday. Look. No, he said he normally is from the south. He didn't say he's from the south. Yeah, he said he normally travels. I'm looking around, are there any type of like images or tapestries of dragons by chance? <laughs> Lucky? Yeah, okay. there are. Okay. There's a there is a really pretty um kind of tapestry that is woven with a red and gold um pattern that is adorning the one of the walls um and there's also like a it kind of looks like it's a scene from mythology like there's a red dragon breathing fire and then there's sort of a um like person dressed in gold and white garb holding aloft what looks like a sunbeam and like repelling the creature with it that's what the tapestry is on, okay. the, on the wall uh song will actually Get up and try to balance, you know, he'll try to balance his plate on his hands and he'll get up and limp over to the tapestry and he'll take his free hand and he'll point directly to a dragon's claw. Mm. Okay. The dragon? And he'll start tapping. Dragon over. claw? And he'll nod. What, does that mean anything to... Probably friends? too far south for us. Um, yeah, you haven't really heard of that as a place before. Is that a city? And he'll nod again and he'll... he'll it's technically can, a... Region, yeah, he'll, he'll, he'll kind of he'll kind of land, or balance his plate on his knee, and he'll take his hands and move them very far apart. It's a big city. It's a, big it's a area. long walk. And he'll nod and point to. Yeah. <laughs> I'm good at charades. Uda, yeah, Uda's real good at talking to Kenku, apparently. <laughs> I got you this, are, you guys. You guys asking what happened to your leg? I can maybe take care of it. And he'll kind of shake his head. And, uh, is there any like visible scarring or anything on it? No, it's just he, he, it's uh so his his leg is he's wearing pants with it breaking out just below the knees. It just seems as though he tends to live with it as if maybe there was some type of strain to it. He's not in pain. He's not in no, he's not in pain, but there's no visible damage to it. Do you mind if I take a look? And kind of shrug and take start eating <laughs> from his plate. Uh, I'll uh, touch the foot and just drop like there's a two points of an audible warble okay. when he, that happens. Um, it temporarily removes the pain a little bit, but you can tell that it's it's just kind of like when you've had, um, shot of morphine. Yeah, oh. when you've had medicine before that's kind of numbed it. Uh, it it's gonna probably fade after a few minutes or well, so. Well, I would say that it's not as if he's in pain from it, but it definitely would yeah. go numb to him because he he doesn't seem to be in pain when he walks. It's just as if he's adapted to it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. okay. 
You kind of look at your hand. You look at his leg. And he specifically uses his left hand. Endeavor. You look at your left hand. Mm-hmm. You look at his leg, his left leg, mm-hmm. and he'll just cock his head and turn, and look at him again, eating, inquisitively staring at him. <laughs> may the serpent's blessing be on you, and may that go away at some point. I don't know if that will do it, but maybe one day, me or my brother can look look at it more in depth and take care of it. Can maybe fix one day. Beak? Can, can can you fix his beak? I think Steve mimicking Hans of Trons is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> um, Me too. How old does the the damage look? Uh, so if you, it's it, been it the looks, of the face. It looks like, like he's had it for years. Like it, it's. Yeah, he looks like an stuck. adolescent. It probably looks like he's probably had it the majority of his life. Like it's it, mm-hmm. it's just there. It kind of looks like um he got it. I mean, actually make a medicine check. Um, you're not, you couldn't specify an exact time, but it definitely seems to be old. Like, it's not a recent thing. Probably with a few years ago. How does the eye look? Oh, uh, so basically, there's no damage to the eye, but it's just the socket is indented. So, basically, it gives his left eye this image of looking very beady because you can only see a very little bit of it. Okay. And when he's looking at someone, is he always favoring the right eye? Oh, he's he's looking at them dead on. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's looking, looking at everybody dead on. It just looks like he had a... It just you look like you've had a hard life. I understand that to some extent. He got hit in the face of the frying pan. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Why'd you go on? <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Right there, Mel Gibson. <laughs> he, he said a, a small woman, girl, hit him in the face of the frying pan and told him where it's going in the pan. Right? That's what he said? Yeah, that's what he okay. said. nod his head. Uh, Is she going in the pan? That's what he said. Ugly duckling. Aww. Is that person here? Is that person still city? alive? And he'll point to the dragon's claw again. Oh. Lots of rust pulls out of. There's no first journal. This bitch gonna get killed. Damn it, you're gonna make me develop the dragon's claw, you guys? Really? <laughs> I mean, yes. when you come up with something. Name something as cool as the dragon's claw. <laughs> of course, we're gonna want to go there uh, eventually. No, when you make my new friends face all fucked up. <laughs> that was Steve's girl. choice. Hey, as a DM, you can override it. And he didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't take away player agent. I don't take away player agency. He makes a note. Of Unless you annoy me. Little girl in the dragon claws who attacked Kenku. I think attacked it might Saul. be his mom. He's trying to read your book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's just, just like notes his... from the road. <laughs> You have a pen in your hand? Yeah. He'll take the fork and put it in his mouth and just go, you know, cross out little girl and write an old woman. Oh. Nanny. Nanny. And then after that, he'll write down orphanage. Oh. Friend, if I can make this right, I will. Small question. Would Hans and Franz know what an orphanage is? No. Well, yeah, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I figured you would from traveling, but I'm like, the Bandai don't have ones, uh, so I'm like, I don't, I don't know, probably. But yes, I mean, I would assume, like, I don't see why there'd be a reason. Yeah, no, we would have encountered them in the Iron Valley. At some point, we would have encountered them around the the North Horn of the mountains there. Yeah, there's big enough cities there. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, but yeah, you'll. He'll kind of grab you on the shoulder and, you know, like, if, he, if I can make this right, I will. I look forward to traveling with you. And he'll look at you and just write down on you that maybe it was better for others because of me? That does not make it better. <laughs> Unless you killed the nanny. You're just pissing in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm, I'm good right now. I don't need to go. There's no wind indoors. It's not of a sigh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I dropped some supplies for us. Una, I did not know if you had any uh, traveling gear. I see you have a pack and I know you've done missions. But I grabbed a bedroll and some tents for us. Um, I'm not sure if you need a bedroll or not. I, I have everything I need. I've done this a couple of times. Okay. Um, so you'll... Put stuff back that we don't need. Um, okay. But 
Um, yeah. All right, so we hit the road. Um, you guys go hit into the, the um stable. And you see a tiefling there who is taking care of the horses. Um, and he, you can see he's wearing an outfit. You saw him last night. He was the groom that was uh, the, the stable boy who was, like, sleeping. Is um, this Arthur Pendragon? Yes, this yeah. is Arthur Pendragon. Wait, Arthur's the stable boy? Yep. Yeah. Arthur's oh, the yeah. tiefling. Mm-hmm. Good morning, Arthur. Oh, good morning. I haven't seen your faces before. You must be new. Oh, hi, Una. How's what it kicking, girl? Of a... What color of a tiefling is he? He's red. Uh, yes, we are Hans and Franz. Uh, it's good to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you, too. Hello. Assuming you're here for some horses, and you're here for your cart. You got pretty sweet horses last night. They were very they were very kind and didn't kick at all when I had to clean out under them. She's a real darling. <laughs> well, she is. Um, yeah, so you guys taking horses? Yes, you got horses for all of us. It'd be great. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Let me see which It'll one. Maybe a big one for a big friend here. He kind of looks over at Ro and he's like, hmm. Hello, right. my name is Rowan. Hmm. They're going to be a very interesting challenge. But I think I, I think I have one that might fit you. Come, come here for a minute. We'll see. Um, and he kind of takes you over and there's this uh, massive <laughs> looking horse. <laughs> You're, you almost would <laughs> Rowan wouldn't know this, but, like, you almost assume, like, he was ridden by some, like, general or something. It just looks like this really old and, like, tough as nails, like, dark gray horse with, um, dark eyes. And it's kind of just, like, staring, like, oh, he'll say, now, Mr. can be a little bit mean, but I feel like you can handle him. Is this kind of like a giraffe horse that he used, like, for farm work? Oh, yeah. (laughs) I will. Uh, I will do my best. Uh, have you have you ridden a horse before? <laughs> when I have ridden a like a dire squirrel. Yes, okay. you've ridden you've ridden um the creatures from your forest. Before. Okay, not a horse, but you know yeah. like um um we, deer and stuff like that. We do not have horses where I come from, but we do have dire squirrels. So would the you concept. Call them dire squirrels. I don't know. Would I call them dire squirrels? Or would I just call them giant squirrels or big you squirrels? You probably call them. Uh, they um, you probably call them big squirrels. They have an actual name, but I don't have it in front of me right now. Okay. <laughs> um, I I have ridden big squirrels before, but never a horse. Big squirrels. Well, I can't imagine a squirrel is uh, much more, much less ornery than Mister. So you should be all right. Song will take his hands and just hold them together the size of a squirrel and just kind of cock his head. <laughs> <laughs> um, they are they are larger than this horse. Larger than this horse? Yes. What? <laughs> are they tasty? <laughs> uh, well, I wouldn't know. <laughs> you lost no real. Um, I've never eaten one before, so I, I can't say normally. Um, we don't We don't eat the forest creatures. Yeah. Do we? I, I, I know we eat some deer and no you don't deer yeah no because the squir- the squirrels are like um you know they're really important for uh work and uh patrols so no we don't we don't eat the horses so the, the horse is the not a village but sometimes winters get tough the horses need to be eaten nora like looks really sad at that and like her lip kind of quiver- quivers a little bit like i guess why well, have to make us sad, brother? Have you have you eaten a horse before? Yes, when winter oh, yeah. is rough. My brother and I spent thirteen years on our own, and there were times where we had money for horses, and then there were times where we didn't have money for food, but we had horses. And you have to eat. It's okay, Nora. I, I suppose it's just really sad to think about. I mean, I've been a horse before. That's weird. <laughs> I don't know how to take that, Nora. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> then I know horses with your people. <laughs> well, no, I. You've seen me turn into a wolf before. I, I've seen you turn into a wolf. I've never seen you turn into a horse. I, I can. I just haven't had a reason to. Because Rowan, like, even when I'm a horse, I'm not quite big enough to carry Rowan, so. Yes, I am very large. Yes. Yes. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you are. Um. <laughs> Uh, the rest of you guys, I've got some nice horses for you, and he'll um, 
take you over and Hans and Franz, he gives you two female horses. Uh, one is called Bessie and the other one is called Sugar Cube. I think Sugar Cube. <laughs> I call the brother. Nope. <laughs> dibs. Look at me all you want, I don't care. I call Dibs. Um, question. Oh, Song, are you offering um, any for Una and Nora to ride in your wagon at all, or no? So yeah, uh, when they'd originally talked to Ben, he when he'd asked if they, he had room, he he nodded and okay. then looked at the so, looked at yeah. the three and just kind of shrugged on those mm-hmm. two. All right. Um. Una so with knowing that, that do you you want to ride in the Is wagon, it like a okay. covered wagon, an open so, wagon. So as you guys get a chance to look at this wagon, it's typical cart uh, with wooden slats on it, but it actually has a tented top to it. Okay. And you can see at the very base of it, if you guys look at the side, that's where a lot of the goods are packed away in crates. And then there's a shelf that is unfolded down that actually has a rail that looks like mm-hmm. it can be used for a bunk. Mm. Does okay. it look like it's a strong structure? Like Una could sit on top of the structure or not that strong? Uh, it's probably just wooden framed with, okay. with canvas on it, but yeah. it, it looks like it would hold up to typical wear and tear on the road. Okay. Yeah. Like kind of like a mm-hmm. ye old. Uh, ye, it's ye old RV for medieval times. Is there like, like a tailgate on the back for Una to sit on the back or no? Uh, so the back does actually, the back does actually have, uh, does actually have a dock or a deck that would step down with chains attached to it. So it sure. did, would fold down and you could sit on it. Almost like a bench. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. I think that's what Una's going to do. She might okay. like take her rope and like tie it behind her. Mm-hmm. So that way nothing falls out, but then like sure. sit on that. Okay. Nora will kind of be like, can, can I ride in the cart too? I've never ridden a horse before. Song I've been not. one, but never ridden one. Yeah, song, song, because uh, I remember it. She's half taller. Elf. She's taller. She's five six. Yeah, she's five yeah. six. Okay. She's a little bit taller. Yeah, he'll song will nod. And he'll kind of he'll flip his way over there and he'll kind of motion her over. Okay, she'll follow. And then once they get to the car, he'll hold his hands out to her to help her step up. Oh no! Thank you, song. <laughs> and she'll she'll get up in the cart. Well, the strength of eight, he'll attempt to. <laughs> I don't. I don't know how much she weighs. Uh, she's pretty lightweight. Okay. So. Um. And that's how Song died. Crushed <laughs> by a half. Brittle bone disease. Done. <laughs> this is your Joker. Mister Glass. Mister um, Glass. Uh, Arthur has you guys sign a little bit of paperwork saying which court, like uh, your signatures, like about the horses, and he'll kind of uh, hand you some bags of feed for him and. Sa- they're saddled and everything. And he's like, "When are you guys planning on returning?" Two days. We should be back. Two days. Two days. Night out to tomorrow. Oh, all right. Well, that should be pretty good then. Still down a bunch of horses, but yeah. Down like... a bunch of horses for what? <sighs> uh, there's there's a bigger adventuring group that was transporting some goods from the south up to the library and they just haven't got, they got delayed a little bit so they should be back in the next few days but it's annoying because it threw off my ship. what was the delay if you may let me ask you well i'm not a hundred percent sure on the specifics and it sounded like they just had some trouble on the road there was bad weather um is that the library north or south or the library in the you think he's referring to the library in this in fan oh they were transporting they're carrying goods there and they just have been coming up from the south and they're delayed well when we get back if they're not back yet maybe we'll have to go out and look for them well we got a we got a sending message from them not very long ago saying that they were on route it was just they were delayed i, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some bandit activity they i'm not really supposed to say this but i think they're getting some like magical stuff for the library. Seeing that there's three horses for the individuals that are going to be riding them. <laughs> so, <laughs> Sorry. Song, song is going to look between everybody and then look back at his cart and the other three horses and go, get back! And then shrug his arms, pointing to you three and then the, th- the, the, the five of them, the three horses. Implying that he... How says, are they going to get back without horses? Yeah, I was confused about that too. Because we, oh. we only have three horses oh, but there's going to be five right. horses coming back. That's right. I mean... Nora can ride with me on the way Dude, back. I would, or be a horse. Yeah. That, I was yeah, curious yes. on that. So Yeah, she could be a horse and yeah. I could ride her. Yeah. <laughs> yep. How long um, can she be in wild shape? <laughs> <laughs> How long can she stay in wild shape? That would be the main thing. Um, She can stay, you can stay in wild shape. She has two, I think, at this level. And it's an for, it's an hour per level. So she'd be able to do it for six, six hours. hours. So most of the day's traveling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
Well, depending on how fast they move. We can always pick up horses, too. It's also depending on how fast they move, too, because if they move at a speediest pace, they could cover the time that she wouldn't be able to travel as a horse. Right. Yeah. And then we're going to a town, so we could probably buy a couple horses in town. Or we just borrow another horse and tie it to the back of the cart. That's true. Well, I don't mean... Nora's like, I I don't mind if you you ride on the back. You're pretty light. Uh, Half your druid level rounded back. Oh, so it's only... An hour each. So right now it's just an hour for sure. Oh, okay, then never mind. Um, yeah, you guys would have to take two of them. Just grab it, yeah. Or at least one more. Well, no, because Nora two. can only stay for... Because yeah. I imagine that uh, I imagine that Nora and, and I apologize again, Una. Una would be able to ride on the same with them being both relatively light. Uh, well, I'm 120 pounds, and yeah, that's and she's probably about like 140. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. So she. Yeah. It's not uncommon. It's not uncommon for a horse to be able to carry something that's an excess. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, you guys could split okay. a horse. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can never eat a whole one. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it open in cat's rings. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Horses are like onions. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought they were. Oh, they sad. Have, they have layers. <laughs> and um, so you're given another horse. Uh, it is named. Charles. <laughs> Charles? Get, get over here. Get out of my head, Charles. Oh, I Charlie, this my You know what? Fuck that. His name is Charlie. Oh, Charlie. Charlie Horse. Oh. <laughs> you, you gave us Charlie Horse. <laughs> Charlie Horse. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. There it's a wife. <laughs> take a line from Kurt hey, Cobain. Is these, these, I want to take a line from Kurt Cobain. Are these loaded? <laughs> so is Luna going to ride on that other horse then, or is she going to... Um, She'd probably still stay on the back of the wagon, just because okay. that and way so she has a better vantage yeah. point. You guys can so, tie you can tie Charlie to the back of the wagon okay. and just kind of have him follow behind or whatever. Yeah. You know, probably like, like a bike either. rack. Just all right, Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> Put the club on. No, Uno will probably like keep an eye back there, and, like and stay with Charlie, but she still wants to be seated because that way she can stand and be more active if danger were to come. Okay. Um. Well, with that, then you guys successfully oh crap I forgot something <laughs> I'm kidding no, okay, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> um, you guys successfully managed to make your way north out of town you actually go through town with the horses and you go out through the north gate in the city passing again the university and also the district where all of the government buildings are you make your way out you go through a little bit of the checkpoint there and then it's just fields and there's like groups of flocks of sheep ahead. Um, some of them actually have wings, which is a little unusual, that are flying around in the air. The sheep? Yeah. <laughs> flying sheep? <laughs> Python. Brother, what the fuck is going on here? <laughs> Those are the face sheep. The, the teeth comes from. <laughs> no, those were like goats. <laughs> Not sheep. Una, make an intelligence roll. Song will nod. Look up. Song wings, will nod. Look to Hans Ron. Not sheep. Say. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, nineteen. Uh, you know specifically that the sheep from the Fey realm, uh, they're part of one of the reasons why the textile industry is booming so much right now. Um, their material is super lightweight and flexible, and it lasts a long time. It's a little bit more durable than regular mundane wool. Um, and it also takes the dyes from the Fey realm incredibly well, which is what leads to that multi-shifting color fabric that is so expensive. Blah. <laughs> Word vomit all over you guys. Wow, that was a good guess. <laughs> <laughs> Seems very counterintuitive to have flying stock. Be very hard to keep them in one place and then also to shear them. I mean, we've sheared sheep in our day, but... Fuck, they didn't have wings, that sounds terrible. <laughs> and they were still hard to catch. Yeah. Uh, face sheep are actually really dumber than regular sheep. And as long as you leave out food for them, they will just sit there and let you do anything to them. Oh, Cause Jesus. Because they're, <laughs> they're, they're high. They're high. <laughs> yeah, they're high. Altitude. <laughs> they're a lot like flying goldfish. They just go to the surface and peck it when you hold out. Yeah. They, they're um, pretty They're pretty. They're awesome. the goldfish of the sheep. <laughs> <Like> <laughs> <dog>. <laughs> all right so well those poor sheep 
right. Now I kind of want to go get a cool new sheep, flying sheep dress. Yeah, I was, I was just going to say, uh, Hans and Franz has an extra 50 feet of rope. He starts making a lot of Should have really got that grappling hook. We could have gone fishing. Boom! Gang! Hans and Franz will the next time I'm bringing Next time I'll bring you a grappling hook. And just like keeps going. You guys can see that there are people who are shepherds of the sheep, though. Like, they're not unattended. There's people walking. How are they shepherding sheep? They got winged boots. (laughs) I'm I'm just curious. How are they they shepherding the sheep in the sky? Um, They are eating them because they they like goldfish. Yeah. They have, one of them has like the, they look like they're regular shepherd's hook, and then one of them looks like it's going too far, and he like cracks it a bit and then he tosses it and it looks like it just extends like um an illusionary force and then just like pulls it back towards the this oh, magic shepherd's hook that's what i want yeah. <laughs> jesus brother i want one of those <laughs> okay once we get paid yes we'll look into it so basically you guys are going and going and the road is pretty mundane for the most part. Uh, there's a lot of hills and a lot of uh, little glens that open up and you can see there's more sheep and livestock. Um, you can also see there's a scattering of trees. Um, it's really quite peaceful. It's a pretty nice day. It gets a little hot, but it's still pleasant with the breeze as you're traveling. And it's quite the scenic view, especially when you crest on top of one of the hills um, and you just see the mountains to your west, and you can see the river off in the distance. You can see the Cater Forest a few miles away from the top of the hill. Um, and then you can also just see more of these rolling hills off, all green and beautiful in the summer weather. It's it's really pretty here. If we get to an area where the hill, like the hills are like a little too hilly or the forest is a little too close, that's when Una is going to be at, the, at her most vigilant. Okay. Just in case. All right. While they're traveling, uh, if there's any type of arid song that a bird happens to sing, song is just going to kind of mimic it. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Can, can you play that song again? I, I want to try to learn it. He's going to look at the reins that he's holding. <laughs> and go kind of like wide Nora eyed. can do it. I'll, I'll hold the reins for you. It's fine. Yeah, he'll, sh- he'll shrug and just. Yeah, so I want to try to do that. I'll come up in the front seat and like uh, sit behind you and then take over the horse's reins. Uh, song will lean over the back and start to step in and slip tumble over and fall to the side oh no <laughs> kind of get up and dust himself off and go over to where he's got a satchel and he'll rummage through and pull out the harp again okay yeah. you're able to do so i'm gonna try to learn okay uh Hans and Franz will kind of range um to the rear a bit mm-hmm. um making like big swooping arcs behind keeping his eyes open okay um, um, and seeing if he sees any unusual animals. All right, make a, a giant bird perception cart. check. <laughs> That's a giant bird in the cart. Wait, you don't count. Apparently, uh, <laughs> fair. Did you go in front or behind? I went back. Okay. Because I have terrible perception. Sure. Seven. <laughs> Seven. Um, you kind of think you see some rabbits around. You see some birds flying through. Um. Pretty mundane stuff. So there's nothing really unique and cool. Well, that was basically grasslands. What about you, honey? Are uh, you rolling? Yep. Uh, okay. And uh, Hans and Franz will be will go up ahead to 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 scout the the forward road. Okay. Looking for signs of stuff. Nice. Twenty two. Twenty two. How far ahead do you get? Um. Oh, probably. You know. Uh. Probably go a quarter mile, half mile. Okay. That's uh, pretty far ahead, but. Well, yeah, mm-hmm. still in sight though. Yeah. yeah, but you know, far enough ahead where if I spot something, I can get back to the cart before the cart mm-hmm. reaches the thing. Mm-hmm. You right. know, plenty of time. Um, you guys are about halfway stabbed. through <laughs> your journey there, and uh, you see, I'm not gonna make you roll perception work. It's pretty obvious. It, you see somebody kind of walking along the side of the road. Um, it looks like they're walking towards north. So, Carrie away from like, us? Yeah. They kind of look like they have a little bit of, like, a limp as they walk, and they're just kind of look like they're carrying some stuff, like some animals and stuff on their, over their shoulder. Okay. Um, yeah, Hans and Franz would, would, uh, um, kind of, you know, uh, slow, slow to a, a trot as he gets closer to this individual, and, 
just kind of shout out, Hello! Oh, hello! Uh, you see a probably, like, early 30s w- woman with uh, kind of, like, ashy brown hair and uh, have a very friendly face, and she looks like a hunter by how she's dressed, and she's carrying some, looks like some rabbits. Ashy gray hair. Yes. Yeah. Ashy brown hair. Or ashy? ashy, ashy brown hair. I'm oh, sorry. Okay. Ashy brown hair. Um. Yeah, Hans and Franz will um, uh, you know, take a take a take a, a just a, a quick glance around, and say, um, are you on your way to? Myfield? Ah, uh, yeah, if I can get there eventually. Well, um, how how about how about far about how far is Myfield from here? Do you know? Um, I it's about let's see, it's about like four more hours of uh, you and your horse. You'll probably make it in about four hours. Oh, excellent. Okay. Um, it's about it's about mid, little bit mid to mid after. Like midday when you guys run into her. Um, yeah, Hans and Franz would um, uh, uh, sit, uh, probably uh, just let her know that he would. He'll. He's. You know. He'll. He'll be right back and and ride to oh. the group. Oh. Okay. Um. You're gonna die, lady. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. Andrew, Hans, and Franz, you said you're yeah, making Andrew. wide arcs. Yep. Um, Rowan mm-hmm. would stay pretty close to the back of the cart okay. near, I guess, Charlie on Mr. How's Mr. Handling? <laughs> give me give me an animal oh, handling girl. check. <laughs> While this is going on, Lizzie, yeah. uh, since uh, Una is trying to learn how to play, mm-hmm. Song is going to be specifically taking her hands and putting the fingers to the strings in order that she be played. That's funny. <laughs> okay. It, he, it does it does help a little bit when he actually starts, like, showing you how to play it. You're like... S- sits behind her, puts her arms. Goes <laughs> oh, he is bigger than me. <laughs> goes all I <laughs> <laughs> don't choke her. Um, wow. Hey, whatever she's into, man. I... <laughs> I wish I could play the song from Ghost right now. <laughs> I wish we weren't playing this on the internet. I got a 16 animal <laughs> handling. Okay. Uh, Mr. has a bit of attitude, but he doesn't give you any trouble. He he knows who's boss. Okay. There's something about your presence that just being so strange and yet so natural at the same time throws Stead it over. And I can only imagine that both Jaeger and Darlin are acting well. Yeah, they're behaving well. They're they're they've always been very well behaved and good horses. Okay. Um, yeah, Una's trying to learn the song. <laughs> That's her thing now. So I know what you all are doing. You're coming back. Yep. Uh, so Hans and Franz will get back to the cart um, and say, "There's a, a hunter trapper up along the road. She's heading to my field as well." Um, about four hours away. Do you think that? What do you guys think? Do you think we should give her a ride? Yeah, we can let her borrow Charlie. Let me, let me talk to the brother. So I, if I see him coming, he would then come up to the cart. Uh, You're going up. To, oh yeah, sure. And then I would say, brother, there's so much. There's nothing hinky going on. Nothing. I mean, what? she's all alone. Hinky. Did you? For now. Did you get her name? No. Does? Can you just? Can you describe her to me? Um, yeah, she had like uh, uh, brown hair that looked like it had uh, fire ash in it. Um, human woman. Hunter? She had some pelts with her. Animal pelts. Would this kind of sort of awful description maybe <laughs> spark something in Una's mind? <laughs> He's probably described like 10 different hunters you've met, so... Okay. You don't know. <laughs> and you had said that you were going to go talk to yeah. her. Mm-hmm. So, as you say, because I'm assuming you came to the back to talk to your brother. Well, no, he came back well, to, no, to, to, came to the front. Well, no, I came to the front to talk to, like, you. So, we're, we're closing the distance. Me and her are at the back of the car right now. Oh, I guess, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Be like, Uno, where's Song? 
No, no. We're next to each other. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, Nora wears song in this. Because I remember right, you said that you were trailing behind us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so by he would have came forward. I see my brother so that would have sparked right. us to probably stop. Like, oh, you know, something's going on. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that would have made us stop practicing. And Right. Yeah, I guess I probably would have peeked my head out the curtain at the front, seeing you, you take off and go up and hear you guys conversing. Sure. And then uh, kind of looking, when you say that you're going to go talk to her, she looks at kind of both of the brothers and looks at Andrew Hunt and she goes, want to do this quiet like. <laughs> <laughs> and he points to your muscles and just goes, well, no, I don't want to kill you, Jesus. He shakes his head vigorously. Yeah. <laughs> then die or no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, you got to stop using Sorry, that. Sorry, man, I'm trying to. <laughs> <laughs> no, I want to go talk to make sure there's nothing funny going on. Song will shake his head. Brother, come with me. Yeah, okay. And we'll ride back to the, the woman there. I'm sure we're okay. closer since you were half a mile in mm-hmm. front. So now She's we're probably just kind of still walking and like limping a bit. And then she kind of turns her? and... Yeah. Uh, how far away are you guys? Probably a quarter of a mile by this point. By well, not necessarily. Got back and... uh, mm-hmm. Because I can cover the distance pretty fast. And That's true. I, I would imagine that Jaeger and Darlin aren't like... Yeah, and at a casual know, pace, it'd still be able to outpace somebody on the ground. Right. Yeah. 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 Moving at and 40 feet or Currently, around. Nora's the one that's actually driving, so right. it would be up to her what speed they would be going. Right. Uh, Nora's just keeping it at, like, a decent pace. But if she... She will kind of say, like, uh, Song, do you want me to make him go a little faster? And he'll kind of look back to the brothers and just go... We're already... Yeah, kind of motion okay. not okay. to go so fast. Okay. That's so, highway well, robbery. Well, well, well. <laughs> um, so you guys approach, and she kind of hears your horses, and then she'll be like, Oh, hello again. Oh, we brought another one of you. And then oh. as, as we get near, he would dismount and walk the horse up. Okay. Um, hello, we are Hans and Franz. Oh, my name Who is are you? Willow. Nice Willow Longleaf. Willow. Um... Willow, who, what? Long, long leaf. Long bow, short bow, sword, daggers. Uh, she has a short bow. No daggers or anything that. Uh, uh, it looks like she has like a hunting dagger kind of strapped to her leg, but that's about she's it. She's got a gut them and skin them field dress. Yeah, mm-hmm. and she's got like about three rabbits kind of tied up in the string around her shoulder. Are you calling from? Fayin. Fayin. No, I actually uh, live in Meyerfield, but I was doing some hunt. Well, not in Meyerfield. I live outside of Meyerfield. And I was doing some hunting. Games have been kind of scarce around there lately, so. That's what you do? You're a hunter? Yeah, that's a good way to make a living. Tell you, step in a rabbit hole and mess up your ankle, but it'll be fine. Are you okay? I can take a look at it. Oh, sure, if you want. Um, I think it's just a since, light sprain. Since, since I don't have medicine, I'm just going to dump two more points of. <laughs> Healing Touch the hands. ankle. Whoa. <laughs> oh, that feels a lot better. Thank you. Yeah. Um. <laughs> are you gonna? Are you, you probably just accelerated so, the healing so it's permanently crooked? Two left feet. So <laughs> when 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 the brothers approach mm-hmm. and are, are talking with her, does she seem nervous at all? Is she like glancing about? Um, is there? Does she seem suspicious at all? Or does she seem just like... Um, she doesn't look like she's looking around nervously or anything, but I get you can make it... Does she react relaxed? Yeah, Yeah. she seems pretty relaxed. I guess, like, I mean, you can make an insight check, but... Oh, no. (laughs) That's Uh, a six. Nope. Glorious five. No, she seems pretty friendly and stuff, Mm -hmm. and, uh... Very appreciative that you fixed her ankle and made her, it feel a lot better. Um, uh, but she's like, have you guys ever been to Meyerfield before? No, we came down to the river, right? Yeah, we came by the river. What was the name of the river again? The Dockrow River. Uh, no, we came down from the Dockrow River from the mountains. Uh, we're from the other side of the mountains. Oh, really? I've never been that far west before. It's a beautiful landscape. Okay. Beautiful lands that our tribes are from. Weird people in some of the towns, but I suppose you get that anywhere. Oh, that's why I'm a hunter. Like, there's a lot of weird people inside the towns. Yeah. We've had some pretty good dealings in, in Feyen. Mm, I haven't really, I haven't been to Feyen before. I hear it's kind of a 
bit of a hodgepodge crazy city. This is usually about as far out as I come from Meyerfield to do hunting. It's a pretty big city. Yeah. You know they have it's... flying sheep? Um, I've heard of that before. We don't it's crazy. Are we, how far are we at this point? You guys are probably catching up now and stuff. Um, before they catch up, he's mm-hmm. going to ask her, <clears throat> do you know of any strange animals in the area? You mean in these fields? Or well, just you're a hunter in, in the area. I'm... Oh, well, the Cater Forest is full of weird creatures. I, I tend not to go very deep in there because of um, some of the strange sights, but... But then he's the forest. Oh, she points to the one by the mountains and stuff. So that's, to the west? Yeah, that's, you were in there. That's where okay. you went and fought the hag. I mean, something that's like a normal animal, but not normal. You know, like um, a... Like a hair that is larger, maybe albino, something like that. No, um, I mean, you hear stories of, like, the things on the plains, you know, like, monstrous dogs. Recently, when I was in Meyer, everyone was talking about seeing some sort of ghostly horse that was riding about the moors and stuff, but that's about it. I haven't seen it yet, so I can't testify whether it's true or not. What about the horse, brother? Yeah, and she wasn't ghostly. No. Um, but I'll give her the rundown of the animals that we're looking for, like anything that if she's... Okay, okay, okay. Okay, okay well, let's go. All right. Um, she, she hasn't heard of anything specific like that. Like, but she does say that, like, I don't know, if you're looking for any sort of wild creature like that, I mean, if you spend enough time in the Cater Forest, you're bound to find what you're looking for. They got all sorts of things in there. You know, we're in... <clears throat> Jesus. In the Fein, we've joined the guild there. Is there something similar in Meyerfield? No, Meyerfield is a pretty small town. I think there's like less than a thousand people there. It's mostly just a farming place. Do you know of any hunters that range farther in the area? Um, well, I'm, I'm mainly keep to myself, but um, if you go into town, I would say to go to the... Uh, Go to the the inn in town. It's called the Plowman. You might run into some passing through hunters in there. You guys are probably caught up by now. I was gonna say, have we heard them talking about? Um, you heard the horse. He specifically yeah. wanted to get Did. this over before they jumped. Right. Yeah. And you, you guys, right as they're the talking about the Plowman. In clipping, town. clopping of, of yeah. hooves and turning like, of wheels. So we did oh, you... hear about the ghost oh. horse. No. No. Damn. As they got closer, uh, the tent. In front of that leads into the cart, Song would have just had his head peeking out through, just watching. <laughs> uh, sh- she'll kind of look like, "Oh, are they friends of yours?" Yeah, we're escorting to my field. Oh, okay. We do have a spare horse if you want to ride with us back to town. Oh, I'm not really, I'm not really good on horses. If, I, if you're offering a lift, I wouldn't mind sitting in the back of the wagon. If not, I can, I can just keep walking. You'd have to talk to. Song for that. He's the the bird man in the front face. See his face. Oh, hello, hello, Song. <laughs> He'll wave. They offered me a bit of a ride with the horse. I'm not really much. I'm not really good with animals. Would you care if I sat in the back? I'll give you one of my rabbits for it, for the ride. And I've got some money. He'll shake his head and just kind of wave around back. Oh, you're super generous. Thank you. Luna, I'll hop on Charlie. You make me wish I hung out with people more. <laughs> It'd be kind of a shrug. Has song. she seen her around the area before, Una? Um, make a wisdom check or an insight check. Insight, oh, goodness. Oh, I have a plus to this. That's exciting. Uh, that's that's super cocked. Cocked. Okay, good. Okay, because that was a one. That's not much better. We have a six. <laughs> Woo! No, but I mean, she she looks like a standard person who. Is just kind of like she doesn't. She just, yeah. <laughs> she just kind of has like features that aren't super striking necessarily. So it's not super memorable. It just looks like somebody you'd see in a store and like never really quite remember their face again. But because it's she's, a blank face, it's blank very face. easy to rescan. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Generic. Change the hair. Change the yeah. freckles. Change the eye color. Um, yep. She's a changeling. Yeah. <laughs> but you said she has a shark bow on her. Yeah. Okay. Right. Uh, keep going. I would help her up because I, I would assume I would have noticed her foot being all jacked. 
Um, well, he did some healing to okay. it, so it seems okay now, but she, she accepts your help up. She's like, oh, thank you. I see you're an archer yourself. I am. Been doing it ever since I could pull a bowstring. Mmm, it's pretty good. I, I've grown up shooting for a while, too. Have you? Around here? Uh, yeah. Growing up near Meyerfield, my father was a hunter, too, so he taught me everything I know. Oh, I, I'm from up north, so I... More wild water stuff. More wild water stuff? Oh, like, uh, bow fishing? Yeah. Okay, I haven't tried that before. It's um, pretty fun. It's a little difficult. She'll make small talk and stuff with you. Okay. Um... Anything else you guys, like, have you want to do? Uh, no, Hans and Franz will be doing back, you know, half a mile ahead looking for other stuff. Uh, Hans and Franz will stay closer to the back of the wagon at this point, but still ranging to the sides. But yeah, is Nora up front still? Try yeah, on. um, do you want the reins back yet or no? Actually, so while uh, Una and the, the trapper are going to be talking, uh, Song is actually going to go into the corner of the cart and he's going to start rummaging through the boxes and he's going to start to restring the harp or he's going to, he's going to pull a harp out and start to restring it mm -hmm. and he's going to uh pull out a specific set of colored strings Ooh, and he's oh. going to arrange them in a specific order okay interesting um una is going to bring up small talk about hey what have you seen anything crazy on the plains lately <laughs> uh, flying sheep <laughs> <laughs> uh I haven't seen anything, but I've heard that there's some sort of ghostly horse roaming around. Yeah, I heard it when we were in Fayen that uh, a couple of these students at a bar is at mentioned that there's a ghost horse on the plane. Have you heard about that story at all? Uh, yeah, the, the locals in Meyerfield have been talking about it for a little bit now. What can you tell me about it? <laughs> Just they see it at night or when it's dark out and... Um, Supposedly, it carries loose travelers away into its strange mists. Do you know where, roughly, they talk about it possibly appearing? Uh, there's not really a concise location. I mean, I'm not even convinced. I mean, supposedly, if it abducts you somewhere, I don't see how anyone could have actually seen it and but lived to tell the tale. Off the road, you said? That travelers get picked off off the road, or...? I've heard it. I've heard it both ways. Okay. I wish I could be more helpful with that. It's all good. I was just curious if there's anything true about it, because I mean, a ghost horse—that'd be kind of fun to ride one day. I mean, I suppose if you're brave enough. I mean, I don't even know if, you'd be, if it's really a ghost if you could sit on it. You never know. Who Magic's are... weird. <laughs> just wait till I get summoned, Steed. Yeah. Luna, <laughs> roll me a d20. Don't fail me now. 16 on the day. <gasps> You're gonna get a whisper. Whispers! I get a whisper! <laughs> we'll just go into the room real quick. Oh, I got a whisper! <laughs> Una, after sitting in the back and talking to Willow for a while, you start noticing some things about her that just stick out in your mind. One, the rabbits that she's carrying over her shoulders look like they've been dead for a few days at least, and you can tell that by the smell and just the general stiffness of the bodies. These are not fresh kills. Secondly, you notice that her short bow doesn't really look like a hunting bow and arrow. It looks more of like a martial bow and arrow. Wait, what's happening? Is Willow more than meets the eye? Are the adventurers being led into a trap? Find out next time on Guardians of Fahal.